This is going to be verse by verse through the epistle of Romans. We're going to start with Romans 1 and look at verses 1 through 7. Paul had never met the Romans, so in his introduction he gives them some very important information about himself. The information he gives turns out to be his beliefs on some of the most important doctrines in the Bible. By the end of this study, I hope you will be able to see why Paul is the apostle that you should follow and why this study is titled, Paul, Our Apostle. Romans 1, 1 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. First off, we see that Paul saw himself as a servant. And not just a servant, but a servant of Jesus Christ. This shows that he wasn't a servant of sin, as the Bible talks about in John 8, 34. People who live for the flesh are servants of sin. The devil has servants, just like the Lord Jesus Christ has servants. If you're walking in the flesh more than in the spirit, then who are you serving? The Apostle Paul was a servant of Jesus Christ, not a servant to watching sports or golfing or playing Call of Duty or Madden or NBA 2K. If Paul was here today, I doubt you'd see him spending his time playing Xbox One or PlayStation 4 like many grown men do in the days we're living in. He didn't have time for stuff like that. He had his mind on winning souls to Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 9.19 says, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Paul knew that if he did his duty, then he would still be an unprofitable servant. Luke 17.10 says, So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. Even a servant who is doing his duty is still unprofitable. Imagine what kind of servant someone who is doing absolutely nothing. Imagine what kind of servant they are and how they're going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. They're going to get up there and they're not going to have anything. Moses, Daniel, Paul, James... And other great men in the Bible were called servants of the Lord. We are bought with a price and we should serve the Lord Jesus Christ and it, because he bought us with his own blood. 1 Corinthians six nineteen through 20 says, What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. We are living in a time where people only serve their self, not Jesus Christ or others. By living for self, you will get to the judgment seat of Christ if you're saved and have absolutely nothing to show for yourself. Lost people think they are free and that they don't have to live by the Bible and have a creator to answer to, but they aren't free. They are servants to sin as the Bible talks about in John 8 and verse 34. And Romans six sixteen says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Romans 6, 6, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So Paul our apostle is a true servant of Jesus Christ. Not only this, but he was also called. Romans 1 1 says Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God. Paul is our apostle because he is the apostle to the Gentiles. Romans eleven thirteen says, For I speak to you Gentiles Inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. It started out with the original twelve disciples, and then Matthias replaced Judas because Judas was the traitor and betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Then Paul became an apostle, even though he persecuted the church of God and wasted it, showing God can use anyone no matter what their past is. So if you think that you have a horrible past or you're too wicked to be saved, God will save anyone. He even saved Paul who persecuted the church of God and wasted it, as he said in Galatians. And in 1 Corinthians 15, 9, it says, For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Sometimes people with a horrible past are some of the best servants that God can call to be in the ministry for him because their past makes them realize they don't deserve salvation and the goodness that God has shown them. Paul was not too big for his britches. He didn't have a haughty spirit like many evangelists do today. He wasn't given special treatment, and when he preached, I doubt the crowd applauded and whistled at him while he was up there. The next reason you should follow Paul is because he was separate from the world. He believed in biblical separation. Romans 1, 1 says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. I doubt Paul listened to headbanger Christian Rock and listened to preachers like T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, and I doubt that he dressed like Lecrae. He was separate and teached biblical separation. He wasn't just separated from something. He was separated to something, to the gospel of God. He was separated unto the gospel of God. When you get saved, you need to replace your old hobbies and things that you used to love. And you need to get in the book and let the book be your new hobby. Like the people in Nehemiah, it says, they separated themselves from the people of the land to the law of God. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah 10 and 28. But Paul was separate and he wasn't trying to bring things together that don't belong together. He didn't think you should keep listening to and accepting false teachers. In Titus 3.10, he says, A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. He didn't think you should pretend to be like the sinful world to win them to Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.11 says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. He was also separate in his ministry. The Bible says Paul was separated to preach from his mother's womb. In Galatians 1, 15 through 17, he was separated from the church in Antioch to be a missionary, as it says in Acts 14, 12. Not only was Paul a called, separated servant, he was also a Bible believer. Romans 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Verse 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures. Notice he said holy scriptures. Paul knew the Bible was holy. He knew it was the word of God. He wasn't like these know-it-all people who claim the Bible has errors in it and that they are the ones that God's called to fix the errors. That junk just makes God sick. Who do these guys think they are when they correct God's words? When I hear someone correct the book, it makes me mad enough to fight. And Paul knew the scriptures were holy and calls them holy again in 1 Timothy 3.15. Paul knew that if a man was against what God said, then he was a liar. Paul is the one who, that said, Yea, let God be true but every man a liar. When anyone, and I don't care who it is, corrects the Bible, then he's a liar. If your grandma corrects it, she's a liar. If your preacher corrects it, then he's a liar. And when Schofield corrects the book in his reference Bible, he lied on that page. So scribble that note out or something where he corrected it. A man that goes to the Greek to correct the Bible always has bad intentions and like Ruckman said 
when a man messes with the book, God messes with his mind. A lot of these guys claim that they believe the King James is perfect, but then you'll hear them say this certain word should have really been this certain word. They want to adjust the Bible to fit Baptist doctrine or whatever denomination they are. But the best advice I can give is adjust your beliefs to fit the Bible. Don't make it fit your denomination or set of beliefs. But not only is Paul a called separated servant who believes the book, he also preaches the right gospel. Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets and the holy scriptures. The gospel that Paul preached was promised by the prophets in the Old Testament, although the prophets didn't understand it, so they weren't saved by looking forward to the cross. The way you know that the prophets didn't understand it is when you read 1 Peter 1, 9 through 12. It says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So you can see, but Romans 1 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets and the Holy Scriptures. The gospel Paul preached was promised by the prophets in the Old Testament. But the prophets didn't understand it because it wasn't revealed to them. That's why it says in verse 12 in 1 Peter 1, unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves. They weren't saved by believing the gospel Paul preached in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. And if that's heresy, then I guess I'm a heretic. I'd rather be a heretic than make a liar out of God, who plainly said it wasn't revealed to the Old Testament prophets. The apostles who walked and talked with Jesus didn't even understand the death, burial, and resurrection. And that is why Jesus had to go back and explain it to them and Luke 24, 25 through 27. Look at those verses. It says, Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not Christ to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So the Apostles didn't even understand the death, burial, and resurrection. Didn't understand why Jesus was having to die. And that is why Jesus had to go back and explain it all to them from the beginning. They were clueless. But the easy way out today is just to say everyone was always saved the same way throughout the entire Bible. That way all the Baptist brethren will like you and you'll be part of their, their club but I'd rather please God than to please men. Who cares if the big shots agree with what you're saying as long as you know you agree with God? A lot of these guys have figured out everyone ain't saved the same way throughout the Bible, but they don't teach it because they know they will lose friends and be labeled a heretic. Read Romans 16.25 and Ephesians 3 verses 3-5. through 5. And see how that the gospel of First Corinthians fifteen one through four was revealed to Paul. So Paul preaches the right gospel and gives you the gospel in First Corinthians fifteen one through four. He even says anyone that gives you any other gospel is accursed in Galatians one eight through nine. But someone does give another gospel in the book of Revelation, an angel does, but he's not accursed because 
he's doing it at the right time. If someone was to give a different gospel now, then he would be accursed. But not only is Paul a called, separated servant who believes the word of God and preaches the right gospel, he also preaches the right Savior. So Romans 1.1, 1, 1, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the holy scriptures concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. By Paul saying he, made of, he was made of the seed of David according to the flesh shows it wasn't possible for David's literal seed to produce Jesus Christ. David was corruptible, but Jesus didn't corrupt. As it says in Acts 2, 27-31, this shows Paul believed Jesus was the Son of God. He preached the right Savior. If Jesus had been David's literal son, then he would have stayed dead. But he didn't stay dead. Luke 1, 34-35 says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So Paul believes our Savior is God manifested in the flesh, and he says so in 1 Timothy 3.16. Not only this, but Paul preaches the Savior resurrected from the dead, as it says in Romans 1.4. Since Paul calls him the Son of God, this shows he believes in the virgin birth. And since he believes he was resurrected, this proves Paul believed Jesus Christ was sinless. If he sinned, then he was a regular man like you and me, and he wouldn't have resurrected. So you see, Paul believed these things about Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of God, God manifested in the flesh born of a virgin, sinless, and that he rose from the dead. I bet you didn't know there was so much in the first four verses of Romans. And just by saying in verse 4, and declared to be the Son of God with power, by say, saying Jesus is the Son of God, that's making him equal with God, as it says in the book of John. So that's more proof that Paul believes in the deity of of Jesus Christ. So Paul is a called, separated servant who believes the book, preaches the right gospel with the right Savior, and he also believes in the Godhead. Many people refer to the Godhead, Godhead as the Trinity, but the Bible word is actually Godhead. In verses 1 and 2, Paul speaks of God the Father. In verse 3, he speaks of God the Son. And in verse 4, he speaks of the Holy Ghost when he said, According to the Spirit of Holiness. 1 John 5, 7 says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But the modern Bibles change this verse because they are just a bunch of liars, and they lie like a bunch of dogs all the time, so they got to change everything that has to do with important doctrines like the Godhead and the virgin birth and the deity of Christ and the sinlessness of Christ and get rid of all the cross-references so you can't find anything out using a Bible. Your best bet is to stick with the King James Bible and throw out all the other junk. But Paul believed in the Godhead, so Paul is a called, separated servant who believes the book, preaches the right gospel, with the right Savior, and believes in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He also wasn't ashamed of the name of Jesus Christ. Romans 1, 5 says, By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Verse 6, Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? Verse 7, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Notice it said obedience to the faith among all nations. Paul went around from place to place preaching the gospel and to people that he didn't even know. He wasn't ashamed of the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. He wasn't ashamed of the name Jesus Christ, and he didn't just call him Jesus, or sweet Jesus, or just Christ, or just Lord, or J.C. He called him the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 7. He wasn't ashamed of his name. Notice Romans 1 5 says, Obedience to the faith. Paul wasn't preaching you have to be obedient, as in doing good works to be saved or stay saved. And he definitely wasn't preaching water baptism here as the church of Christ claimed, seeing how in Corinthians Paul says, I came not to baptize but to preach the gospel, showing that the Getting baptized isn't part of the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, it doesn't even mention baptism. Don't you think if getting ducked in water was essential to salvation, it would be in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and that he would be going to baptize and say that that is part of the gospel? But uh, Romans sixteen twenty six says, But now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to to the commandment of the everlasting God made, made known to all nations for the obedience of, of faith. So the obedience of faith is believing the gospel. The obedience of faith is you're obedient when you believe the gospel. You can get baptized till your skin is more wrinkled up than Methuselah's forehead. But obedience to the faith ain't talking about water baptism. The Romans were obedient to the faith. They believed the gospel when they heard it. So they were called, as it says in verse 7, and beloved of God, as it says. And if you're saved, then you're called and beloved of God. No matter what you did in your past, it says they were called to be saints. Did you know the Catholics make you go through a bunch of steps to be saints? And the Pope has to look into your life and declare you holy before you're called a saint. And you can only be called a saint after so many years of your death. But God said that you're a saint just for being obedient to the faith. There's no steps. You just got to believe the gospel. So Paul says, we are called, and since we are called, this shows there is a need. And since we are called, since we are called, we, it shows that we have the ability to, do, ability to do something. And if he has called us, then it shows that we have an opportunity to do, to do something for him. Romans 1.7 says, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul our apostle. He is called. Separated. Unashamed. He's a servant who believes the book. Preaches the right gospel. With the right savior. And he believes Jesus Christ is one in three. And three in one. He believes God manifested himself in the flesh. As the Lord Jesus Christ. He also believes Peace comes from God, as it says in Romans 1.7. He isn't going around saying, we need world peace and junk like that. And he doesn't believe peace comes from uniting all religions and getting the Billy Graham Association and Lecrae to come do a rap, Christian rap concert to get the troubled youth in. He believes peace comes from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You only get peace when you get Jesus Christ. If you know Christ, you know peace. But if no Christ, there's no peace. The first seven verses of Romans are loaded with all kinds of stuff. Paul let them know in just the first few verses the most important things for a Bible believer to believe. He believes in being separate from the world. He believes in preaching the right gospel the death, burial, and resurrection. He believes God's words are holy 
therefore they are without error. He believes in the right Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He showed in a few verses, he believes in the sinlessness of Christ, the virgin birth of Christ, the deity of Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He even shows the two natures of Jesus Christ when he said, according to the flesh. He even lets us know he believes in the Godhead. So Paul is our apostle, who is a separated, God-called apostle, and servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, who believes in what every true Bible believer professes to believe in.